Des lunes également, 62 lunes. Voilà, maintenant je vous laisse en compagnie du lancement et je vous souhaite une bonne soirée. Avec ce launch, et j'aimerais vous souhaiter une bonne soirée. Une bonne soirée, une bonne soirée, une bonne soirée. Et bien bonjour à tous nos amis du monde entier et bienvenue une nouvelle fois à Kourou, le foyer de la famille Ariane pour la diffusion directe du vol VA236 pour Ariane Espace. Ce soir nous lançons deux satellites pour nos amis de longue date de Corée du Sud et pour d'anciens comme de nouveaux amis du Brésil. L'action est sur le point de démarrer mais tout d'abord la parole est à Stéphane Israël, président exécutif d'Ariane Espace. So, ladies and gentlemen, dear partners, dear customers, Mesdames et Messieurs, Space is delighted partenaire, chers clients, to welcome you from the Guyana Space Center for this new Ariane 5 mission. mission Ariane the second 5, of the year with our heavyweight vehicle. In a few minutes, we are going to launch two key satellites for our customers pour nos and partners. SGDC for Visiona Technology and Spatial SA on behalf of the Brazilian telecom operator Telebras and the Brazilian government. CoreaSat 7 for the Korean operator Katesat. Both satellites have been manufactured by our long-lasting partner Thales Alenia Space. Thanks to Visiona Technology and Spatial and thanks to Katesat for your trust. As you can see on the control screen behind me, Ariane 5 is on the launch pad after having been Transferred yesterday. The operations linked to the final countdown are in progress. Due to a shift in the fueling operation, we are from now in a position to launch at 5:55 p.m. The time of the opening of the launch window, which will last two hours and 24 minutes. De deux heures, This new launch window opening minutes. will of course Cette be subject to the changing weather conditions, but the weather is good and we have des conditions uh, wind conditions, so we could nous avons launch at the beginning nous of the launch window. Uh, the overall performance de la GTO de required for this eh bien, la performance is globale 10 tonnes pour atteindre l'orbite de transfert gestationnaire et de 10,000 As you know, the liftoff occurs 7 seconds Comme vous le savez, le décollage aura lieu 7 secondes après le H0 au moment de l'allumage des EAP. Ariane 5 se dirigera vers l'Est pour opérer la séparation des satellites sur l'orbite elliptique inclinée à 4 degrés par rapport à l'équateur. L'altitude au PRG sera de 250 km. The apogee Et l'altitude à l'apogée sera de 35 926 km. SGDC sera le premier à se séparer de 28 minutes et 11 secondes après le décollage. Then, Corasat 7 Corea will separate se séparera 8 minutes et 35 secondes plus tard. We will resume the antenna nous in reprendrons 20, 25 minutes. à l'antenne dans 20-25 minutes. Go Ariane 5, Go SGDC et Cora Sat 7. Et bien entendu, bon spectacle à vous. Stéphane, merci beaucoup. Vous avez entendu Stéphane annoncer que nous avons un nouveau launch window qui est en train de se dérouler à 1755 local. C'est le même temps au Brésil, c'est 2255, je pense, en Paris. 555 AM dans Seoul. Donc, on va couper maintenant. On va vous laisser enjoy the moments that we're going to give you about 20 minutes. I'm going to go to the broadcast and set up shop. We're going to resume the broadcast. As Stefan said, 20 minutes roughly, 15 or 20 minutes before 17.55 local. Until then, you have a few minutes. Enjoy it. Sit tight. Thank you. After four weeks of assembly and control activities in the BIL, the launch integration building, the launcher was transferred to the BAF final assembly building to host both payloads for launch. The VA-236 um, mission is to launch two spacecrafts built by the same prime contractor, Thales, based in Cannes, La Boca. The two satellites, SGDC and Koreasat-7, were loaded on the same mountain of and arrived on Tuesday the 14th of February, the launch date of VA-235, at 1.50 a.m. in order to be in the S-5 area six hours before the expected H-0. Both preparation campaigns were conducted in parallel in the S-5C south and north, 
buildings, pooling the manufacturer's resources for the benefit of the two satellites. The fit checks were performed after transfer to the fueling S5A and S5B buildings and confirmed the compatibility of the satellites with the adapters. After the nominal filling operations, both satellites were declared ready to start a combined operations plan on Friday the 3rd of March. SGDC was trapped on its adapter on Monday the 6th of March, followed the day after by Koreasat 7. Counting activities started this morning at 6 a.m. The launch area is completely evacuated from H07. Then we may proceed with the nursing of the area and the proper and filling operations. As you can see, we are back. Joshua Jampel here. Sorry you had to wait, and thanks for being patient through all the red. We're going to uh, move to a description of the launch vehicle, you may not be familiar with Ariane 5. There are two versions. We're using uh, the one that stands 54 meters tall tonight. She is in two parts, a lower composite and an upper one. They call the lower including the main stage and the boosters. And the upper, a single engine and the satellites that you can see there. When we get off the ground, we will describe each in turn as it is functioning. The passengers, SGDC, the heavier one in the upper berth, will be separated first, and Korea Sat 7, the lighter passenger, at plus 36 minutes after liftoff. The green status panels on the right are a real time summary of all the launch activities here in the space base. We check them before lifting off. We go only when the satellite's launcher and the base are ready, and not before. We're coming to you live from Jupiter, the Jupiter Mission Control Building, but another place that's busy tonight is the launch zone, about 15 kilometers away. That's where the launch management teams are working under the direction of the launch operations manager, Rafael Breda, tonight. Right now, the two teams are working up there. One is responsible for the ground operations, the other for the readiness of the vehicle. The launch site operations manager heads up one group and he coordinates with mission control for final authorization to launch. In all, about 100 people hard at work up there, going over the final checks and verifications on all parts of Ariane's launch system, because the synchronized sequence is the automatic sequence, the final moments of the final countdowns, the tip of the iceberg. It's a complex series of operations running right down to liftoff, gradually letting the launcher become autonomous. Autonomous, I should say. So what's happening is power is passing from the ground, which controls everything now, to the two onboard computers, which will control everything afterward. During the seven minutes, there are two computers on the ground, one monitoring the fluids and the other the electrical systems and they're located in the uh, launch management zone that we just saw they checked out the hundreds and hundreds of values and pressures and parameters this split screen image shows the propellant feeder arms in the middle of the launcher we'll pull back in a minute and get a better look liquid hydrogen on the left liquid oxygen on the right what are they doing they're putting propellant into the upper stage tanks and you'll see the arms pull back at minus five seconds before ignition. There they are in the middle of your screen. The yellow bar is going from the gantry into the upper stage. It's one of the last things you'll see and we just like to mention it so you can look out for it. A minute and a half to go and the guests and the VIPs here in Jupiter are making their ways out to the two terraces on either side of Jupiter and uh, giving them a wonderful view right onto the launch pad. If you haven't come down here for a launch, I urge you to do so. The DDO is going to call out the one minute mark and we'll be into the final 60 seconds. There we are. Gives us a chance to say hi to all our friends in Brazil at Visiona, at San Jose dos Campos, and at the Ministry of Defense in Brasilia. I'm sorry if I had trouble with the pronunciation there. I've been told more than once this week, and my Portuguese is terrible, but I'm doing my best. Sorry about that. Oh, hi also to our friends at Katie Satin Soul, to the Talos Alenia teams in Cannes, 
to our industrial partners, ISA and Kness, and all of you following on the Internet. We hope you enjoy it. We're going to cut away and let you listen to the DDO as he calls out the final seconds. Watch for the cryo arms to open at minus five. Atout de DDO, attention pour les décomptes finales. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage Vulcain. Allumage UAP, décollage. Wait or not? Ariane 5 beginning her mission, lifting off beautifully from the ground here in French Guiana with a lot of fire. Beginning her mission, the fourth for Ariane space this year with her two new satellites for different regions for Latin America and for Asia. Making her way up through the clouds, which have passed over us, giving us a great... great DDO says everything is well on board. The two boosters are providing 99.0% of the thrust, propelling the launcher along her trajectory at an ever higher velocity. 775 tons at liftoff. That's the total mass. She's burning five tons of fuel every second, two and a half tons in each booster, and another 300 kilos in the core stage. Ariane 5 is now following the, the normal. in the onboard computer, which gives all the orders. DDO says everything is fine on board. We're in the first of four flight phases. We'll describe each in turn so you can follow Ariane as she heads east across the Atlantic. Right now, the first flight phase, the single core stage engine and the boosters are burning. Boosters going to burn for another 20-25 seconds. Extinguished and with the good viewing conditions you'll be able to see those boosters flame out and even probably fall back from the launch vehicle. So get ready for that. That's quite a sight in about 20 seconds. We're 15 kilometers from the launch pad here in Jupiter, but even here you can feel the sensation of liftoff. And at about a minute and 30 seconds after launch, delayed, the delayed sound comes over here. There is the flame out of the boosters. Like. And the DDO has confirmed it. You can see on either side there's a single point of light in the middle. That's the launcher making her way eastward. On either side you can see the flamed out boosters trailing a little smoke. Lovely sight. And in, a, in another minute we may, if we're lucky, be able to see the extinction of the fairing. That'll be nice. That'll make another couple of points of light. The two boosters fall 500 kilometers from shore in a protected area. What that looks like is this. There's another booster on the left of the vehicle out of camera range. La trajectoire est normale. At the bottom of your screen, on the left our altitude, on the right our speed. You can see that in two minutes, Ariane has already hit a speed of over two kilometers per second. The speed we need to inject a satellite is roughly nine kilometers per second. So keep your eyes on the numbers. When we get near the region of nine la kilometers, la you'll know we're getting close to separation. The DDU has called out separation of the fairing, and you can see that up there. Another two points of light. What that looks like from the vehicle point of view, that's one half on the left, another half falling out of camera range on the right. We can separate the fairing now, revealing, as you can see on the top, our first satellite, Brazilian satellite. We can separate the fairing because we're out of the dense layers of the atmosphere, over 100 kilometers up. There's neither friction nor heating, which could disturb the passengers. Once a year, a launch is dedicated to a town that's part of the area and cities group. Tonight, Lampoldshausen. Whoever wants to present the world from this perspective was most probably given the propulsion for that in Lampolshausen. Lampolshausen, as a part of the municipality of Harthausen, is situated in the middle of Europe, 
in Heilbronner Land. Surrounded by a beautiful cultural landscape, high-tech and space-tech included. The Space Center Lampolzhausen is a well-known brand in space technology. Unique in Europe are the test stands, where propulsion systems are partly tested almost under flight conditions. We are very proud that the Space Center Lampolzhausen is situated in the municipality of Horthausen. Without the Space Center Lampolzhausen, Ariane 5 couldn't launch and most of the satellite wouldn't have propulsion. Furthermore, DLR is a very important partner of the Ayan program. Due to its huge competence in fluid propulsion, DLR is prepared to test and qualify the propulsion of the upcoming Ayan 6. So, all in all, the Space Center Lampelshausen is very important for Harthausen and the Heilbronner Land. And Heilbronner Land has a lot more to offer. The fascinating possibilities in the district of Heilbronn make it perfect for economy and research. Here is the developing center of Bosch, a world enterprise which has thousands of engineers. The region's biggest employer is Audi, a German company that produces luxury cars. Over 16,000 people work there. By the way, there is a good partnership between the industry in the Heilbronner Land and the Space Center Lampolzhausen to support the United Space in Europe. With the boosters gone, we're in the second powered flight phase. The single engine, the core stage, is burning now. Our speed is important at this moment, and that's the role of the main stage. It's cryogenic propellant system that's very cold fuel is not only highly efficient but can provide a push that can last a long time. There are two different propulsion systems on the Ariane 5, cryogenics as used in this main stage. Cryogenics in the main stage, more efficient than the solid propellant which was used in the boosters. Basically, solids get us off the ground, away from the pull of the earth, basic power. Cryogenics are for more precision orienting of the vehicle. And of course, they also allow a stage to be reignited, but that's in the other version of Ariane where we're not using tonight. Ariane 5 is the heavy lift launcher. Remember, the other two members of the family, Soyuz for middle-sized payloads, two and three tons, and Vega, the light lift vehicle for missions of, well, roughly one ton. On the left is the long white tube. That's the lower stage. And above that, a white band vehicle equipment bay where the computers are. There's a black bell-shaped structure, which is the SILDA, which carries the second satellite. This is the first of what may be several, several shots of the launch and replay. You can look at those uh, moments. Again, the Ariane 5 took off from the pad just close to eight minutes ago. We have cameras at several of the half dozen dozen observation sites that are stationed across the base, and they furnish us with shots from different angles. Here's another one, and we should have even more later on. I believe the DDO has confirmed, yes he has, the acquisition of the Varian signal by our first downrange tracking station. That's at Natal, across the border in Brazil. All of Varian's trajectory has been designed to be followed from the ground. Another replay. The launcher is sending radar and telemetry back and a network of stations, including uh, La propulsion est nominal. including Natal, takes the signal. We wanted to say hello to our friends at Natal, run by the Brazilian Armed Forces, because since the very first launch of Ariane in the program, Christmas Eve 1979, they have been part of every launch that's gone east of every one of our three Ariane members of our Ariane family. So, nice work. DDO has separation EPC. extinction of the lower stage, and you'll see separation of the lower stage in the animation, and the ignition of the upper stage. All these three commands, extinction and separation of the lower stage, ignition of the upper stage, coming on time, about 172 kilometers up, these orders are given by the onboard computer in about 13 seconds. 
The lower stage, you will see in a moment, will fall back into the Pacific off the coast of Peru. We're now into the third powered flight phase. The single upper stage engine that'll burn until plus 24, 54, 16 minutes, roughly. With separation of the lower stage, Ariane 5 has used up all of the 175 La tons of power in that stage. Another 14 tons of dry mass in the lower stage. Remember, the vehicle lost 240 tons of fuel in each booster before. So most of her weight, you can guess, is fuel, 90%, in fact. With ignition of the upper stage, we can begin to focus on the satellites. SGDC is up first. Buscando prover internet a 100% do território nacional, garantir a segurança das comunicações e fortalecer a indústria espacial brasileira. O governo federal desenvolveu o programa Satélite Geoestacionário de Defesa e Comunicações Estratégicas. Moderno e com alta capacidade de conexão, o SGDC vai alcançar os lugares em que a rede de fibra ótica não chega, atendendo às necessidades do Plano Nacional de Banda Larga, propiciando inclusão social e promovendo o desenvolvimento socioeconômico do Brasil. Com o lançamento do satélite geoestacionário, estamos dando mais um passo importante visando esses objetivos oferecendo cobertura a todo o território nacional. O satélite geoestacionário terá 70% de sua faixa de frequência disponível para ampliar o alcance e qualidade da banda larga, o que também dimensiona como esse projeto do governo federal é estratégico. O satélite geoestacionário, operado e controlado por brasileiros, vai atuar também no âmbito militar, por meio da Banda X, provendo comunicações seguras para o Sistema de Defesa Nacional e para as comunicações estratégicas do governo, assegurando soberania com canais de transmissão exclusivos e protegidos. Além de assegurar independência e soberania nas comunicações de defesa e militares, o SGDC, o nosso satélite geoestacionário, ele representou uma grande transferência de tecnologia, capacitação de profissionais e será operado em dois centros, um em Brasília e outro no Rio de Janeiro, sob total controle dos brasileiros e do Brasil. Compete a Telebrás, que tem a missão de conectar os locais mais distantes com internet de qualidade, a operação civil do SGDC, que utilizará a alta capacidade da banda KA para ampliar a oferta de banda larga no país. A partir de agora, teremos mais defesa para o Brasil, mais segurança para as informações e poderemos levar a internet em 100% do nosso território brasileiro. Teremos mais inclusão social, mais inclusão digital e seremos mais competitivos. As comunicações seguras serão controladas pela Força Aérea Brasileira, responsável pela operação e monitoramento do SGDC, que expandirá a capacidade operacional das Forças Armadas. A Força Aérea, através do seu Centro de Operações Espaciais em Brasília, é responsável pela operação do SGDC, que será feito por militares das três Forças Armadas. Assim, garantimos o suporte e segurança para o sistema de comunicações militares por satélite, expandindo a capacidade operacional 24 horas por dia e 7 dias por semana. O programa foi desenvolvido pela Visiona Tecnologia Espacial, uma empresa dos grupos Embraer e Telebrás, responsável pela integração completa do sistema, garantindo a comunicação entre todos os seus componentes. Com o lançamento do satélite, a Visiona demonstra, além de sua capacidade técnica e de engenharia espacial, a capacidade em gestão de sistemas complexos como foi este projeto estratégico para o Brasil. Todos os requisitos estabelecidos pelo governo foram cumpridos ou mesmo superados, com otimização de seu desempenho e garantindo a qualidade final da solução. O SGDC alavancou a indústria espacial brasileira, agora inserida na cadeia global de fornecedores, por meio de um intenso programa de transferência e absorção de tecnologias de ponta, propiciado por sua fabricante francesa, a Thales Alenia, capacitando o Brasil para novos projetos espaciais. O SGDC é um importante primeiro passo na partnership entre Thales Alenia Space and Brazil to develop its space program. Not only are we delivering a highly advanced satellite, but we have also implemented a comprehensive technology transfer to Brazilian companies. In addition, we have integrated over 30 Brazilians into our teams throughout the project to foster Brazilian space expertise. When it comes to this topic, 
Sempre é lembrada a importância da transferência à tecnologia. Ao agregar o conhecimento e a pesquisa desenvolvidos no exterior, alavancamos ainda mais o segmento. E o projeto do satélite geoestacionário, além dos benefícios para a inclusão digital e nossa defesa e soberania nacionais, também se apoia neste pilar fundamental que é a transferência de tecnologia. O satélite geoestacionário é uma ferramenta imprescindível para o desenvolvimento da nação. Vai proporcionar a todos os brasileiros um país conectado não só com tecnologia, educação e conhecimento, mas um Brasil conectado com cidadania, igualdade e justiça. SGDC. Conectividade e segurança para o Brasil. While you were watching that film, we were picked up by our next downrange tracking station after Natal, called Ascension Island, a tiny island in the South Atlantic, 10 meters, kilometers square, I should say, belongs to the UK. All is well on board as the DDO continues to give that information. SGDC stands for Geostationary Defense and Strategic Communications Satellite. It's the Brazilian government's first satellite, also the first for the operator, Visiona which is a joint venture between Telebras and Ambra Air Defense. It's also the first to be launched by Ariane Space in a turnkey contract with its builder, Talos Alenia Space. We'll have more on Talos Alenia in a moment. Brazil's government has three objectives with the program to reduce the digital divide in Brazil by furnishing high-quality net services across the country, provide the Defense Department with a secure means for strategic communications and to provide Brazil's space industry with the key technologies that will let it play a bigger role in future space programs. SGDC will cover South America, particularly Brazil, and more particularly the country's remote villages with net and broadband. That's roughly 70% of its use, the other 30% for military communications. A word now on SGDC and its close relationship with area and space. Unlike other satellites in operation over Brazilian territory today, SGDC was carefully designed to cover all regions inside Brazilian territory with the same quality of signal. Telebras understands that SGDC is a great opportunity to allow the reduction of existing differences in the offer of wideband internet access with good quality between the population living near the great cities and those living in remote areas. Mario, you are the satellite mission director for SGDC program. Could you please describe the main features of the spacecraft and explain us the main services and applications which will be deployed for your customers? Brazil has continental dimensions. SGDC was built considering a well-defined set of requirements derived from the country needs in terms of communications. In this way, the satellite, due to the coverage capability in KA band, will assure digital connectivity to all Brazilians, providing broadband services all around the country. Considering the X-band capability, SGDC will maintain and enhance the nation's sovereignty and defense capability. Besides the contractual terms, the relationship among Fisiona, Telesalenia and Ariane Spass all the teams working together was extremely close and direct. This led to a very friendly and productive environment. All points were discussed clearly and in deep detail as needed. Following this launch, which will be the SGDC benefits for Visiona? Visiona will consolidate its capability as a space systems integrator, being able to perform the role of the only Brazilian prime contractor organizing the national industry supply chain. The TAP, Technology Absorption Program, allowed us to update and consolidate the knowledge in all the disciplines required for satellite-based systems development. In addition, considering the technology transfer program for elected national companies, it will be possible on the incoming programs to significantly increase the Brazilian content 
from equipment, subsystems and AIT, assembly, integration and testers. Six minutes left in the upper stage burn. Cut off, remember, due at 24.54. If you just joined us, we're launching two new telecom satellites, SGDC for Brazil, KoreaSat 7 for South Korea. And we have now been picked up by our next downrange tracking station in Libreville on the west coast of Africa in Gabon. Till Ariane 3, the last downrange station was in Ivory Coast, and for Ariane 4, we needed a new station farther east. So set one up 40 kilometers from Libreville, opened in 1986, and receives telemetry for about a quarter of an hour. Some numbers. Today's mission is the 287th for the Ariane Space family. We're delivering our 555th and 56th satellites since the program began back in 1979. Ariane Space has launched 114 satellites, four operators based in the Americas, 21 for Latin America, 93 for North America. The company has 93% of the market share in the region, has 100% of the market share in Brazil, which is not bad. Arian has launched all the nation's commercial telecom satellites, going back to Brazil Sat 1 in 1985. And in the Asia-Pacific, Ariane Space has launched 77 satellites for local operators. Moving to our second passenger now, a short film on KoreaSat 7. Since 1970, KTSAT has provided satellite services in Korea. With the launch of KoreaSat 7 in 2017, KTSAT will start global services beyond Korea. KoreaSat 7, located at 116 degrees east, provides beam coverage in Southeast Asian markets. With an even broader coverage and services, we will best serve our customers. We will give you more than you need. KT Sat. Acquisition de la télémesure lanceur pour la station de Malindi au Kenya. Just a minute to go in the upper stage burn as Ariane 5 continues to perform flawlessly. During the KoreaSat film, we were picked up by our last downrange tracking station on the east coast of Africa and Kenya called Malindi. So you see Ariane crossing Africa in five minutes. One interesting note, there's been a slight loss of telemetry signal today. It's quite normal, doesn't cause any problems. Sometimes the ground stations suffer a brief blackout due to the launcher's position. Tonight there was a brief loss of signal between Galio, the station here in Kuru, and Natal, 63 seconds. Another between Ascension Island and the Libreville station of about half a minute. We don't lose the information, it's stored on board. Inside the vehicle equipment bay is something called the central telemetry unit, and inside that is another thing called the mass memory. The exact times and lengths of the signal loss are programmed into this unit, and the unit itself is programmed to record the data it would normally be sending down to the stations on the ground. It's likewise programmed 
program to start sending the data to the stations when the signal comes back. La propulsion est normale. We're waiting for the confirmation of the extinction of the upper stage and we'll be into we'll be through with our powered flight phases. On the left is our upper passenger. The black bells shaped structure in the middle is called the silda. That's the carrying structure for the second satellite. Korea side is underneath. The white band is the vehicle equipment bay and the engine which you see is burning. Another few seconds to go and the DDO will call out confirmation of the cutoff. You see that happening on the animation. Right on time at about 640 kilometers up. Ariane 5 has reached her maximum speed. Take a look at the bottom right. You'll see the speed start to drop as we move into the new coasting phase once the power has been shut down. In three minutes by the time we separate the Brazilian satellite, her speed will be 8.9 kilometers per second. Talosalania Space, up next. We design KoreaSat 7 to give our customer, KTSat, better throughput and wider coverage over Korea and South Asia. This is the third telecommunication satellite we have manufactured for KTSat, and we are particularly proud of the deep relationship we have built over more than 14 years between us. KoreaSat 7 is based on our upgraded version of a Spacebus 4000 B2. This version is perfectly suited to the Ariane 5 lower position. It offers larger capacity and more power in a lighter spacecraft, providing KTSAT a very powerful telecommunications mission. Thanks to the great collaboration between all our team, we have reached a mission performance which exceeds indeed requirements. It will enable a full range of video and data applications such as DTH, broadcast services, government communications and VSAT networks. Moreover, it will support increasing demand thanks to its steerable K band beam. In fact, today is important for Thales Alenia Space and Ariane Espace because we build both satellites being launched today. And this is the second time in the history two of our satellites are traveling together on board Ariane 5. I want to thank everyone involved in this project and we all wish KTSAT, KT and your customers the very best for KoreaSat 7. The mission this evening carrying the 147th and 48th satellites built by Talos Alenia Space or its predecessors. We're coming up on separation of our first passenger, SGDC. Always a moment of high concentration. The teams have gone through all these procedures before, but it does call for tremendous focus. All eyes are on the computer screens, all ears on the phones, awaiting confirmation of satellite separation. And you heard the first good news. Successful delivery of our first passenger, Geostationary Defense and Strategic Communications Satellite. At 1,100 kilometers up, some smiling faces behind the Brazilian flag. You notice the people in the hall here holding their applause becomes somewhat of a tradition on double launches. The mission's not over. Ariane 5 still has to separate our lower passenger, Korea Sat 7, coming up in about eight minutes. Now that the Brazilian satellite is separated, here are its first post separation maneuvers. Telemetry acquisition in about 10 minutes, partial solar array deployment in about three hours, sun acquisition in about two and a half hours. There will be three motor firings on day two, day four, and day five and then total solar array deployment and antenna deployment on the sixth day out and in-orbit testing beginning on the 13th of May. Up next is the SILDA, 
separation. Remember, the Silda is that black bell-shaped structure that lets us carry a second passenger, and you'll hear the DDO call out that milestone in about uh, 20 seconds. Our second passenger tonight, Kuriasat 7. Ariane 5 is known for her double launches. She's the only commercial launcher capable of lifting two heavy satellites. We've used the Silda or an earlier version of it, at least 120 times that I can recall. Seven versions of it. Separation du système de... <coughs> Separation du Silda. And there you see the separation of the Silda, pushed away by the mothership by a series of springs, I think there are eight, maybe 12 of them, revealing to the elements, curious at seven, you see the blue and gold and black box. Her separation coming up shortly. I remember what one recent launch. So often have they used the, the double launches. There was a recent launch, uh, Flight 228, I think it was. It was a solo launch for an Intelsat. The crews were so used to doing double launches that all the scaffolding and cables and electric and fluid lines that they used for solo launches were packed away in the final assembly building. So the combined operations for that mission needed an extra day to find them and get them out. Another place where people are hard at work tonight, the CVI, that's the Quick Look Telemetry Display Center. Now these teams have all the means for receiving and processing and storing and analyzing all the data coming in from the ground stations along Ariane's flight path. Remember, we've been calling them out for you, Natal and Ascension Island and the African stations. Right now, these teams are following and analyzing all the key flight data they're reporting that flight data status back here to us in Jupiter. That's why Jupiter is known as a nerve center, because everything comes in here. And later, these data will be treated to reconstitute the entire mission. The flight will be recreated in figures and analyzed again. We are in what they call a coasting phase. There are other names for it. Once the power shuts down, a free-flying phase. Ballistics phase is another one. We mentioned the upper stage has a dual role, propulsion and ballistic. With the extinction of the upper stage, her propulsion part is over, and she's carrying out her second role now. We're coasting. That doesn't mean nothing's happening. Because, as you can see, on the right-hand side of your screen, well, you saw it for a moment there. The composite being spun up. These are these maneuvers we'll talk about in just a moment. Our final film, a look at Korea Spat and Korea Sat and Airlines. Hoon, you are the satellite mission director for Korea Sat 7. Could you please describe the main features of the spacecraft and explain us the main services and applications which will be deployed for your own customers? Korea's 7 was built by Thales Alenia Space using a Spacebus 4000 B2 platform. The mass of liftoff is around 3680 kg. That means more than 21 years of fuel lifetime. Korea's 7 will provide a full range of video and data applications, such as direct-to-home broadcasting, internet access, and VSAT service with mainly KU band transponders and its added KA band steerable beam. Korea C7 will be positioned at 116 degree east and will provide improved satellite service over the wider coverage area, including Korea, Philippines, Indonesia, Indochina, and up to India. This is my second time to attend the launch campaign. I had also been attended the launch campaign for Korea Set 6 in 2010. One different thing for me was the signing ceremony on the pairing. This event was not be during the Korea Set 6 launch campaign. This event was good and will be remain in my memory for a long time. Katesat, Thales Alenia Space and Ariane Space teams have been working closely to achieve Korea Sat 7 flightworthiness in the frame of this mission and readiness for launch. Could you give us your impression regarding those relationships and what they bring to the realization of this mission? I think the important things of teamwork are trying to understand each party's situation and well communication. 
In terms of that, we were a great team based on our good relationship. Eventually, this kind of good teamwork will, will make our mission to success. Following the layup and IoT phase leading to the operational phase, what are the main steps to achieve a complete deployment of the service over Asia? And tell us how this will benefit for Katesat. Korea's 7 is the first satellite which is extended coverage nearly all over Asia as KTSAT's own satellite. This is absolutely big challenge to KTSAT, but we also believe that there are still many chances over the Korea Set 7 service areas with emerging markets. KTSAT has already been focusing on excavation of new customers with its own capability. Doing this way, KTSAT will leap ahead as a global satellite service provider. Koreasat 7, the third satellite launched by Arian Space for KTSAT, after Koreasat 3 and Koreasat 6, KTSAT Korea's top telecommunications and media services provider. Arian Space is also a major partner in the Korean government space program. We launched KitSat 1A in 1992, then KitSat 2, also known as KitSat B, I believe, in the following year. 2010, we launched COMS, a weather and oceanography satellite for KARI, K-A-R-I, the Korean Aerospace Research Institute. Just a few seconds to go until separation of KoreaSat 7. About a half a minute. Since 1992, Ariane Space has launched one-fourth of all Korean satellites, three institutional satellites for KARI, the research outfit, and two commercial missions for KTSAT. So with today's launch, Ariane Space orbiting a total of six satellites for the nation of South Korea. We're waiting for confirmation of separation of our second and final passenger, KoreaSat 7, and you'll hear the DDO call out that moment. Again, high concentration among the teams here. The mood here in Jupiter is, as it was for SGBC, I would say very focused. Separation Korea Sat 7. So the final good news, you can hear the applause and you can see the pictures, the happy faces, the hugs and the smiles all around here in Jupiter as Ariane 5 has delivered her second passenger Curious at 7 out over the Indian Ocean. So for those very focused and concentrated moments just a minute ago you can see the change here in Jupiter, very buoyant all across the Space Center and at all the points and posts where people are following the launcher and the satellite work is just beginning, or soon will be, at the different ground stations for both SGDC and KoreaSat, and at the other sites around the world where the satellite's first maneuvers are being monitored. While we're waiting for the post-launch speeches, and I'll give you the names of the people who will be Addressing the crowd here, KoreaSat 7's first operations will be telemetry acquisition in about 11 minutes, sun acquisition in about two and a half hours, partial solar array deployment in three hours, motor firings on days one, three, and five, antenna and total solar array deployment on day five, and arrival at the in-orbit testing window on the 12th of May. As the handshakes and hugs and congratulations continue here in Jupiter, the podium is being set up for our speakers. They will include Stefan Israel of Arian Space, Eduardo Bonini of Visiona, Juan Sikhan of KTSAT, and Romy Letuc of Talas Alenia Space. Some of these uh, some of these speakers are seated on the VIP side, our side here of Jupiter, but Stefan Israel has been working in the fishbowl, and he is making his way to the podium, and his will be the next voice you hear. Stefan Israel, you have the floor. 
Bien, Monsieur le Préfet, Madame la députée de Guyane et présidente du groupe des parlementaires dear pour l'espace, Monsieur le maire de, de, de Guyane, dear mayor of Courouge, distinguished guests, dear customers, I and Space is delighted to announce that LGDC and CoreaSat 7 have been separated as planned on the targeted geostationary transfer orbit. For the second time this year and the 78th time in a row, success is here for Ion 5. Well done. Congratulations to all. On social media, we had many Star Wars geek telling us, may the fourth be with you. And so it has, the fourth was with us all the way. Tonight's Ion 5 <laughs> serve two special customers and countries for Ion Space. With the launch of LGDC in upper position, Visiona Tecnologia Espacial has entrusted its first ever satellite to Ariane Space on behalf of the Brazilian telecom operator Telebras and for Brazilian governmental needs. Welcome to the Ariane Space family. I'd like to express my profound gratitude to Visiona CEO Eduardo Bonini, who is with us tonight, and Telebras President Antonio Loss, who is watching this launch from Brasilia. Let me also highlight the presence with us of two representatives from the Ministry of Science, Technology, Innovations and Communications in Brasilia, Mr. Arthur Coimbra, Director of Broadband, and Mr. Maximiliano Martinao, Secretary for Information Technology Policy. We are very proud to have delivered for Brazil, a region where Ariane Space has been a major player since the launch of Brazilsat A1 in 1985. Indeed, 100%, it would be difficult to do better, of Brazilian geosatellites have been launched by Ariane Space. Another special partner, Catesat, has entrusted its third satellite to Ariane Space since our launch of CoreaSat 3 in 1999. This new joint success bodes well for future collaboration. Many thanks to Catesat and more specifically to its, its CEO, Wan Sik An, who is with us to, tonight for your trust. I should mention that CoreaSat 7 is the sixth satellite orbited by Ariane Space for Korea. It follows an extremely rich Franco Korean year 2016, which provided the occasion to emphasize the strong bonds uniting our two countries in the space sector. Ariane Space has two more geosatellites to launch for the Korean Space Agency, CARI, Geocomsat 2A and Geocomsat 2B. It will be next year and in 2019. I would like also to congratulate our long-time partner, Thales Alenia Space, who built both satellites on tonight's flights. And it is the seventh time we have launched two TAS spacecraft on the same Ariane. So, dear friends of Thales, it is okay to put all of your eggs in one basket when you are with us. Now, with 148 Thales Alenia Space produced satellites orbited since 1981 by Ariane Space, and eight more in our backlog, we will certainly continue on this successful path. So, many thanks to TAS for your trust, and more specifically, specifically to Vice Presidents Rémi Letuc and Eric Humbert, who are with us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, with our fourth, success, fourth successful launch of the year, the second with an Ariane 5, Ariane Space is now on track to deliver 12 launches this year as originally scheduled. I would like to thank our customers for their patience and understanding. So let me congratulate all our partners for today's success, the 78th in a row for heavy vehicle Ariane. ESA and all the member states of the Ariane program whose support is crucial. Airbus Afro Launchers, Ariane 5 Prime and first shareholder of Ariane Space. CNES, Ariane 5 Design Authority and our daily partner here in CSG. Our contractors in French Guiana and all employees at the launch facility. Je tiens aussi à remercier toutes les autorités, tous les élus qui nous soutiennent dans nos lancements et à travers nos actions ici en Guyane française. And of course, let me pay my tribute to my Ariane Space colleagues for the latest success of the Ariane vehicle. With four more flights to perform in the two coming months, our teams will be quite busy. So I would like now to welcome to the stage our customers and partners. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Good evening, Ariane Space guests. I must start in apologizing because I need to talk to 200 million Brazilians. I will speak in Portuguese, okay? Yeah, Mr. Maximiliano Martinhão, Secretary for Information Policy at the Ministry of Science, Technology, Innovation and Communications, and Mr. Arthur Coimbra, Director for Broadband at the Ministry of Science, Technology and Communications, and Chairman at the SGDC's Steering Committee, on behalf of whom I greet the members of the Brazilian Government and Telebras. Dear Mr. Stéphane Israel, CEO of Ariane, and Monsieur Rémi Letuc, Telecom Projects VP at Thales Alini Space, and now a friend. Ladies and gentlemen, today we accomplished the most visible part of this program, its most representative part. In a few hours, SDGC's launch will become news all over Brazil. Brazilians of all cities will benefit from such an accomplishment. Thanks to SGDC, Telepress services will reach their final destination in cities, villages and communities that were once isolated, remote and lonely, but will now change for better. Likewise, the Brazilian Armed Forces shall improve their operation with this new satellite, ensuring our sovereignty. When Visiona was created, bringing together ideas from Embraer, Telebras, the Ministry of Communications, the Brazilian Aerial Space and the Armed Forces, he had a target to deliver the mission. Looking back, we realized we've taken the good decisions, our efficient management, our contract partners' performance, Thales Alinea Space and Ariane Space, as well as the relationship established between all parties resulted in countless gains for the program. Visiona fulfilled its role as of the detailing of specifications, search and selections, which was carried out in record time and in a transparent way up to this day when we carried out the launch of a satellite, a project that had its deadlines and costs respected and that exceeds the performance expected, adding value to Telebras. We've been trusted with the mission to turn Visiona into the Brazilian Inter integrator of space system. Our engineers and professionals from different areas gain valuable experience throughout these years, and today we can affirm that we are ready for the challenge and proposing of proposing innovating solutions to the Brazilian needs in the space area, providing a national technology to solve concrete problems while looking for greater efficiency in carrying out future programs. Management and technology aimed at results. The commitment towards national technology is part of Visiona's DNA and it had already provided some results. We've recently concluded the codification phase and started the test phase for the first national system of orbit and attitude control for satellites, a critical technology that just a few countries have and that is now available for Brazilian future satellite program. SGDC's governance proved to be an efficient management tool. Thanks to the support and the partnership between Telebras, the Ministry of Defense, the Ministry of Technology, Tech, uh, science, technology, innovation and communications, chief of his staff office and the very presidency of the country, this state project has been executed in an integrated manner, meeting or even exceeding the expectations. SGDC is a milestone in Brazilian telecommunication, security and also for our spatial industry. We thank all of our partners, Visiona's executive board, Minister of Defense, Mr. Raul Jungmann, Minister, Minister of Science, Technology and Communications, Mr. Gilberto Kassab and Mr. Antonio Loss, President of Telebras. On behalf of Visiona's staff, we thank you very much. Boa noite a todos. Excelentíssimo senhor Presidente da República, Michel Temer. Excelentíssimos senhores, Dear Mr. President of Brazil, Minister of Defense, Mr. Raul Jungmann, President of Telebras, President of Visiona, Eduardo Bonini, President of Ariane Space, Stefan Israel, Mr. Vice President of Thales Alinea Space, Remy Letuc, other authorities, ladies and gentlemen. 
It is a historical day in Brazil, with the first satellite of the Brazilian government entering into orbit. The country will be able to provide high-capacity broadband access all over its territory. Services provided in the outskirts of large sizes cities, the countryside, rural areas and the Amazon will have the same quality enjoyed by users in great urban centers. This will be possible thanks to the work of Telebras and partnerships with the private initiative. In its turn, defense-related communications will increase in sovereignty, autonomy and readiness. Military communications will count on the best coverage we've ever had. Such a coverage will allow for more effective ground and marine operations, benefiting from equipment of a lower size and greater capacity. In addition to the gain the satellite represents to Brazil, this whole process represents the renewal of an aerospace policy that began back in the 80s, when the first Brazilian satellite was launched. The technological improvement carried out by dozens of Brazilian professionals in the past years by means of absorption and transfer of technology will help Brazil building a future highly complex satellite. It's the conclusion of an accomplished project that lasted five years. It mirrors the capacity of scientists, Brazilian technicians, as well as the, professional, the professionalism of everybody involved. Now, it's important to be aware that this is an intense work. We have a long path uh, in the future to develop the launches and the satellites. If you allow me to say, I would like, I would like to suggest the utilization of the base of Alcântara and the state of Maranhão and more autonomy in the monitoring optical and meteorological of our territory. Finally, on behalf of everybody involved, I would like to thank the President Michel Temer, whom, despite of physical restrictions that are naturally understood, he dedicated himself to the accomplishment and to the obtention of the resources necessary to the accomplishment of this mission, as well as Minister Gilberto Kassab, who chose this project as being a priority for science, technology and communications. Thank you very much. Good evening, you all. I need a bit of time to recover, you know, emotionally speaking. Um, I'd like to address you in Korean. But there's only five or six people who can understand Korean language. So it's going to be challenging. Is there a one of the French? Yes, soldiers who come from Korea, yes? Maybe? Okay, no. Okay, I'll start with French first. So, uh, Mr. Eduardo Bonini. Oh, apologies. And uh, from Visiona in Brazil. Dear Mr. Stefan Israel. As you uh, are in space, dear Mr. Rémy Le Duc, dear Mr. Humbert, VP of Thales Alinea Space, and dear Mr. Terter from the Ministry of um, Science, dear colleagues uh, from Katie Saad, uh, all of them are still up to experience this very intense moment. Dear ladies and gentlemen, if I may, I'll address you in English now. Thank you. Uh, there is a saying in Korean, let us say, that means that witness comes, sweetness follows. Indeed, we have some difficult times and hard moments because of uh, the delay of launching. 
But maybe this is why the launching success of this day is today is all the more sweet than I expected. In every aspect of life, we all have challenges. Sometimes we face to face with some problems which is unexpected and seemingly beyond our control. But what is important thing is, I think, to keep our faith and trust and look at the right side rather than get caught up in the situation. The message is from uh, Stephanie Sawyer. Constantly sent us every day was, in a sense, a signal of hope. With that hope, I could be able to redirect new messages to my colleagues and customers with hope and confidence. So I would like to say uh, thank you, Stephanie Sawyer. Could you applaud you, sir? Thank you very much. Because, he, because of his energetic effort in communication with us and with Guyan peoples as well, and also launching safely our satellite to dear my customers. I cannot thank you enough your kind understanding kind and kind trust toward us. Last month, I was very grateful your patient. You displayed so nice and positive spirit in spite of that. I brought you thousands of miles away from your, your home, but there was no launching show. Now, with launching success, I could say to my customers that you have choice well in trusting KTSET as new business partner. For KTSET, we will remember this day as a kind of beginning of our company because the launching success will give us a mark of the new era and a kind of milestone for KTSET. With the Korea Set 7, our service coverage will expand to not only for Korean Peninsula, but also everywhere in Asia. So we will take a bigger step toward uh, being more global satellite operator. So I would like to extend my deep appreciation to launching mission team of Arian Space and the task team who managed to maintain the safe and healthy condition our satellite in spite of very difficult and hardy conditions. I'll, I would like to take this op opportunity to convey my heartfelt gratitude to all the RN Space staffs and personnel who made every effort and personal sacrifice to return the customers back home, even though there are so many difficult times there. Last of all, and most importantly, I would like to express my gratitude Sincerely to our chairman of KT Group, Dr. Hwang chang for his full support and encouragement, although all through this time. Merci à vous. Bravo.
Good evening to all. So what fantastic launch and what a great day with a very nice opportunity to see the rockets uh, with a clear sky. It was wonderful. So first, congratulations to the Brazil space community, Eduardo Bonini and everybody at Visiona, Telebras, and Brazilian MOD teams as well. Congratulations to Juan Sican and everybody at Catesat Company. Juan, as a new CEO, I think it's a great start. Your satellites are now in space. We are very proud of this achievement with an excellent teamwork and cooperation between our teams. We are very pleased for you. Well done to all of you for this superb achievement. In terms of today's magnificent launch, I would like to thank Stefan and all the team at INSPAS. RN5 operated like clockwork, I would say, as usual. And that's definitely due to your teams know-how and skill accumulated over years. Great job. A big thank you also to LNS Thalesiania Space Teams for the huge investments during the manufacturing of these two satellites. And as far as the GDC is concerned, a special thanks to Brazilian team who actually support us with an excellent cooperation and team spirit for designing, building, and testing their satellites with our team. It was a, an outstanding project, and you know, behind outstanding projects are remarkable people. Collaboration with everybody at Catesat is always a great pleasure. We are particularly proud of the deep relationship we have built between our two companies over more than 14 years. And I do hope this will continue forever. Concerning the next steps, right after separation, Thales and your space team have taken over the control of your satellites, and Michel Roussy and Pierre Guillermo, respectively SGDC and CoreSat 7 project managers, just confirmed that we have first cry for your babies. So we do receive your telemetries and we have the satellite on control. Special thoughts and best wishes to our Thales team for the next operation phases where they will bring your satellites at their final orbital position. Afterwards, in orbit satellite tests will start and will confirm their performances in orbit before giving the keys to my dear customers, Eduardo and Juan. On behalf of Jean-Louis Gall, we wish you to both Visonia, Telebras, KTSAT, and your customers the very best for both SGDC and CoreSat 7 satellites. We look forward to seeing you again for such kind of space magic events. Congratulations to all. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll uh, bring these uh, speeches to a conclusion in French. Uh, when listening to the speeches of my Korean and Brazilian friends, uh, and uh, Eduardo can address you in French uh, just as well, but I was just thinking, wow, under the current circumstances, I say that France is larger than itself. When it opens up uh, onto the world, then our end is a magnificent magnificent European project, as a matter of fact. So we'll be back on the 18th of May for a very important uh, client uh, for our in space, SES, namely. We'll be here with Soyuz uh, as well, with which we have a fantastic cooperation going on. And as early as the 1st of June, we'll be back with Ariane and we'll be servicing uh, two very important uh, clients, Viasat and Utelsat, uh, namely, and we've launched our American satellites and for Boeing and uh, French as well as European satellite for Airbus. So there again, a nice opening uh, to what uh, makes uh, the world and nations uh, beautiful and exciting. Some nice words from the customers summing up their satisfaction about uh, events this evening, and that will do it for us from Kourou over some last final shots of the launch replay, we will say goodbye. Ariane Space's fourth launch of the year and the second within Ariane 5, a big success, made us wait. 
but all's well that ends well. Two new satellites on their way, beginning lives in space, bringing internet and other services to more people in Brazil and Korea. SGDC and Koreasat 7, congratulations to everybody involved. That makes 78 straight successes for Area 5. Our next launch, as Stephen Israel said, May 18th, that'll be the second Soyuz of the year, the passenger SES-15. You won't want to miss it. We'll be here. We hope you will be too. Until then, on behalf of everybody here at Europe Spaceport, the Guyana Space Center, Joshua Jampel saying thank you for being with us. We hope you enjoyed it. We certainly did. And we look forward to being with you next time. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you.